I'm Michael Bichea, the uh, author of Living Media Ethics, Routledge, uh, Taylor and Francis, and also Distinguished Professor at Iowa State University of Science and Technology. And this is a summary for readers of uh, my book and for my class, Media Ethics, at the Greenwood School. Today we're going to be talking about bias and diversity, and we're going to take a look at uh, not only whether we ourselves harbor any intolerance, but how media, and that is uh, advertising, journalism, all platforms in public relations, deals with bias and also stereotypes. Typically, I ask um, my readers and students not whether they themselves are intolerant, uh, racist, or anything of that nature. We'll assume that Everyone viewing this uh, video has a good conscience and tries to treat everyone with respect and sensitivity. But the real issue is not whether we ourselves harbor bias, but what will you do about it if you see it at the workplace? In that case, we have to take a look at human resource policy, and we'll be doing that both in the book and in my classes. As teacher and author, I have always found it useful to take a look at uh, history as well as philosophy, and particularly the, the history of the United States, looking at the preamble to the Constitution, uh, the Declaration of Independence, the Emancipation Proclamation, which is really a military order, and then we're going to take a look at videos that show um, how this country responded to um, really intense moments concerning bias that emanated out of the Civil War, uh, the racism involved uh, during that time and also in our history and how uh, we have dealt with the um, consequences of our history. We will take a look at how journalism responded to it. Horace Greeley's Prayer of, of 20 Million and Abraham Lincoln's response. We also will look at outcomes of the Civil War and the uh, history of the 13th and 14th Amendments and also uh, the unfortunate Dred Scott decision and how that has influenced us. And as always in my classes, we take a look at uh, YouTube videos that reinforce the message and how that message is received today in society. We'll also look at stereotypes. The irony of the First Amendment is that it allows citizens to hold racist ideas as long as those racist ideas are not directed at, at a specific person. But the, um, and journalism has to respect the First Amendment, practitioners do too. But we also have to understand that society um, and our obligation to society calls on us to practice tolerance uh, for the civic good. And we'll be talking about uh, fairness and social responsibility when it comes to stereotypes. We'll be watching videos of different types of stereotypes and what those videos tell us about society. American Indians, for instance, and how they respond on the campus of uh, Arizona State University. We'll take a look at satire, which also uh, can make us aware of truths we do not want to admit. We will take a look at Muslim stereotypes, also LGBTA stereotypes, and much more. We will also look at YouTube videos uh, that uh, have value based advertisements 
uh, and this one is particularly important about how the disabled feel looking at those mannequins and what uh, an organization did in creating disabled mannequins to um, feature uh, fashion and, and clothing and, and others. I think that is a very good example of uh, value-based advertising. Unfortunately, advertising also is rife with stereotypes, particularly um, ones directed at women. We're going to spend some time uh, looking at the faces of Appalachia because it shows that stereotypes uh, can be directed at all races, religions, and creeds, and how we have to guard against making sure that all of our content is free of bias. And as always in media ethics, it's not whether you are biased or, or whether you stereotype. It is what are the consequences of bias and stereotypes. They include mistakes, professional embarrassments, undermine morality and more. Making this particular chapter in the book and lecture especially important for everyone. Thank you.